morning, everybody. Let everybody get settled in. It's always good to see so many and everybody. Again, welcome this morning to our worship services here at the Nicholsville Church of Christ. If you are visiting, please, as an as a honor to us, we have on the back of the, the bulletin a QR code that you can scan to record your visit with us, or you can do a collection card on the back of the pew if you'd like. You can leave it on the, on the pew, or you can put it in one of the collection plates in the front or the back. Again, it's a beautiful day, a beautiful Lord's Day to come together to worship the Father. Son and the Holy Spirit. As we are now settled in, I do believe we have a scripture reading and a song to begin with. Without further ado, just a scripture reading. So just a scripture for the services this morning. All right, I'll turn it over. Today, I'll be reading 1 John chapter 3, verses 1 through 3. See what kind of love the Father has given to us, and that we should be called the children of God, and so we are. The reason why the world does not know us is that it did not know Him. Beloved, we are God's children now, and we will be has not yet appeared, but we know that He, he appears when He appears. We shall be Him because we shall not see him as he is. And everyone who thus hopes in, in him purifies himself as he is pure. Good morning. I am thine, O Lord. First, second, and fourth verses, please. I am thine, O Lord, I have heard thy voice, and it told thy love to me. But I long to rise in the arms of faith, and be closer drawn to thee. Draw me nearer, nearer, blessed Lord. To the cross where thou hast died. Draw me nearer, 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 blessed Lord, to thy precious bleeding side. Consecrate me now to thy service, Lord. By the power of grace divine, let my soul look up with a steadfast hope, and my will be lost in thine. Draw me nearer, nearer, blessed Lord, to the cross. Where thou hast died, draw me nearer, 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 blessed Lord, to thy precious bleeding side. There are depths of love that I cannot know. Till I cross the narrow sea. There are heights of joy that I may not reach. Till I rest in peace with thee. Draw me nearer, 
my precious bleeding son. <clears throat> oh, how I love Jesus. There is a name I love to hear, I love to sing its worth. It sounds like music in my ear, the sweetest name on earth. Oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus. Because he first loved me, it tells me of a Savior's love who died to set me free. It tells me of his precious blood, the sinner's perfect plea. Oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, how I Jesus, oh, how I love Jesus, because he first loved me. It tells of one whose loving heart can fill my deepest woe, who in each sorrow bears a part that none can bear below. Oh, how I love Jesus, oh, how I love Jesus, oh, how I love Jesus, because he first loved me. Help me, please. Our Father, our God, we are ever so thankful to be able to bow our head towards you. Father, realizing that in total reverence do we bow. Reverence the only God there is. And that we pray that you'll be merciful to us, a sinner. We ask this morning that you be with Doris as she's lost her loved one. And Father, the only way, the only person that can ever really comfort her heart in no comparison is you. And we ask a special blessing may go her way. Father, we're, we're inquisitive and we always will be. We always wonder, where'd you come from? Father, how do you know on one side of the earth what I'm doing and on the other side of the world, you know what they're doing? We believe that there is a God, that you create everything. But this side of heaven, we'll always wonder different things. But on the other side of the Jordan, we won't really care. Father, we ask this morning that you look into the hearts of each and every one of us here, as only you can. Is it because we're here this morning to be able to honor and to sing praise to the Almighty God? Or does our language and the way we treat other people. Do others see that and say, that's not Christianity. Help us to be more Christ-like. Live the way that you want us to live. Encourage us as we try to encourage one another. And Father, we pray that you'll forgive us of our many sins and mistakes. Yes, be merciful to us, a sinner. We try each and every day, and we fail. But we get back up and we try again. And then when this life is over, you have promised us a home in heaven for each and every one of us. And Father, we try our best to get there. To be able to serve you throughout all eternity. In his name, amen. stand as we sing when the roll is called up yonder please
When the trumpet of the Lord shall sound, and time shall be no more, and the morning breaks eternal, bright and fair. When the saved of earth shall gather over on the other shore, and the roll is called up yonder, I'll be there. When the roll is called up yonder, 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 I'll be labor for the master from the dawn till setting sun. Let us talk of all his wondrous love and care. Then when all of life is over and our work on earth is done, and the roll is caught up yonder, I'll be there. When the roll is caught up Good morning, everyone. I'd like us to begin this morning by thinking about childhood. Um, that is not the right slide. Okay, well, something's gone wrong, and we've got our title slide this morning. I apologize for that. Go ahead and turn in your Bibles to 1 John chapter 3. Uh, I normally have the slides on the screen, uh, but I apologize. We're going to be reading from our physical Bibles. If you don't have uh, your Bible, there should be one on the pew in front of you. That's where we're going to be this morning, 1 John chapter 3. But I'd like us to begin this morning by thinking about childhood. Um, <clears throat> when we just hear that word, when we hear childhood, what comes to mind? Many of us have been blessed with good childhoods, and we have lots of good memories from that uh, portion of our life. And even if a lot of it, as, as we've grown, uh, even if a lot of it is kind of a blur now because our, our long-term memories weren't so perhaps well-developed when we were children, uh, we still have a definite impression of what childhood was like. And we remember the simplicity of it and the joy of it and the innocence of it. Some of us I know may have had very hard or very sad childhoods, but we probably still remember moments of simplicity and joy and innocence, even amidst uh, those really hard things. And this is why we tend to treasure childhood. Uh, this is why we so often wish we could go back and, and be a child again. Uh, simple things can be the source of such great joy to us as children. And uh, there, there's so much to explore and, and discover. And there was also a sense of, a sense of endlessness to life. Uh, we could hardly imagine get, growing up and getting older, even if uh, it, a lot of us as children, we, we at the same time can't wait to grow up at the same time, but it kind of feels like we're going to be children forever. We have deep instincts in us from our creator to value children. There is an innocence and a vulnerability to them that moves us to want to protect them. It moves us to have compassion for them. And even if we're interacting with children who may be very difficult and they may be really testing the limits uh, of our patients, we still know their children uh, and we still know what that means for how we interact with them. And it's not the same as interacting with adults. Uh, we still know what their status as children means for their vulnerability, uh, their need for protection, uh, their need for attention and provision, and, and not just physical provision, but their need for emotional and relational uh, provision. And even, even for those of us who uh, perhaps don't interact with children all that often, or maybe you don't feel like you're all that good at interacting with children, I for a long time didn't feel like I was all that good at that either, uh, even then we still know uh, the, at a deep level, we know at a very deep level inside of us the value a 
child has and the value all children have. We know to value children. It's not hard to value children. One of the most beautiful truths in scripture is that we are God's children. And that means that it's not hard for him to value us. That's something that is sometimes kind of hard for us to believe. Sometimes we may think and and operate as though God is primarily upset with us and looking for ways to disapprove of us and looking for ways uh, to punish us. Or sometimes we might think that God is really just not all that interested in us. Uh, We can be in his good graces and go to heaven if we want, uh, or we can rebel and God will make us suffer for that, but it doesn't really matter either way. God is, is rather indifferent to us. Sometimes we can think that as well. But scripture tells us otherwise. Scripture tells us that God values us because we are his own children. He has a a baseline, a a foundational, fundamental disposition of care and concern and love for us that guides all of his interactions with us. We have value in God's eyes because we are his children. And that's the truth that 1 John celebrates in our passage for this morning, 1 John chapter 3. And good parents, and we could also think about uh, teachers and, and mentors, other, uh, other influential figures in a, in a child's life, uh, but good parents know to give good things to their children. Uh, and this can mean, of course, giving things that are fun and enjoyable to them, but it certainly doesn't only mean that. Good parents are interested in shaping their children into certain kinds of people, uh, people who will grow up to see themselves and see Uh, the world around them and see their fellow humans a certain way uh, and who will interact accordingly, who will who will live according to that good way that they see the world. And parents invest very intentionally. uh, They invest very heavily in giving their children the good things they need for that kind of growth. They are fully invested in the well-being of their children. And this is also something that first John teaches us this morning about God's relationship to us. So chapter 3 uh, of 1 John uh, begins with this saying. If you have your Bible, look down with me at 1 John chapter 3 and verse 1. It begins by saying, See what kind of love the Father has given to us that we should be called children of God, and so we are. See what kind of love the Father has given to us. Notice the way that John has worded uh, the opening uh, statement of, of this chapter. Uh, God calling us his children is a way of showing us how and how much he loves us. God calling us his children is a way of showing us that. He's trying to say something about that when he says we are his children. And what he's saying is God has towards us that fundamental disposition of care, concern, compassion, and protection. He values his children. John has a little bit more to say about this a little further down in the chapter. Uh, God calls us his children, like John says here in in verse 1, but he doesn't just call us children. Uh, He doesn't just look down on humanity and say, all right, uh, if you follow Christ, I'm going to call you my child. He does do that, uh, but he actually does more than that. John mentions a few verses down, uh, down in verse 9. He says that we are born of God. And he also talks about being born of God in other places in 1 John. And in his gospel, Jesus uh, records, uh, John records for us in the gospel of John, Jesus' conversation with the Pharisee Nicodemus, very famous conversation. John 3.16 comes from that conversation. And earlier in in John chapter 3 and verse 3, Jesus tells Nicodemus, "We, we must be born again to enter the kingdom of God. The Apostle Peter talks about this too. In 1 Peter chapter 1 and verse 3, uh, he says that God has caused us to be born again to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus from the dead. We are born of God. Think with me for a moment about what that says about the connection God has with you. Like the connection parents have when they give birth to children. And they can see the resemblance and they know that this is their own flesh and blood. We truly are God's children because God has made us new. He has given us new life in himself. That is being born again. And John stresses back in 1 John chapter 3, uh, chapter 3 and verse 2, John stresses that we are God's children 
now. He says, beloved, we are God's children now. Uh, we're not just waiting for that day when Jesus returns and we make it through the day of judgment and then we'll be uh, God's children, then we'll be safely loved by God forever. He says that now we are God's children. Today we have from God that fundamental disposition of care and, and compassion, even though today we also still wrestle with sin and we sometimes fall. Uh, we still have that. We still have that even though we continue to learn more and more about his will. And sometimes as we're learning, we discover along the way that we were wrong about this or that or the other thing. He still has towards us a care and a love that is fully reliable and isn't going away because we're his children. And God values his children. So we are his children now, John says. And then John says, uh, in verse 2, uh, he says that one day in the future, we will be like him. This is what tends to happen uh, with children. As they grow up, they tend to become like the dominant adult influences in their life. Uh, whether that's their parents or grandparents or teachers or, or mentors, children grow up to become like the influential adults in their lives. And children of God will one day be like God himself. And John says that this will happen when he appears. He says this will happen because then we will see him as he is. John is talking there about when Jesus returns. Then we will see him clearly, and then we will be fully like him. Other parts of the New Testament talk about when Jesus returns in different ways. Uh, the Apostle Paul, I'm thinking of Romans chapter 8 and verse 18, if you want to turn there. Uh, but he talks about this moment when Jesus returns as receiving glory from God. Uh, he says in that passage that uh, the things that we go through now, uh, those things are nothing compared to the glory that is going to be revealed to us when Christ returns. The author of Hebrews, uh, Hebrews chapter 2, verses 9 and 10, uh, he talks about how Jesus was glorified when he ascended back to heaven uh, after his resurrection. And the author of Hebrews says there that Jesus wants to bring many sons of God to glory. That's us. He wants, Jesus wants to bring many sons to glory. Jesus wants to glorify us when he returns and takes us to the Father, just like he was glorified when he went up to the Father uh, the first time. And so all these different ways of talking about this, they're all talking about that time when we fully bear the image of Christ and therefore fully bear the image of God, which is what God has always intended for us as his children. He wants us to grow up to be like him. And we will be fully like him in eternity. And back in 1 John chapter 3, John says in verse 3, and this, this passage, this verse is especially crucial. John says in verse 3 that whoever has this kind of hope, whoever anticipates um, being fully grown to be fully like Christ when Christ returns, whoever has this kind of hope does something in the meantime. He says th that they purify themselves as he himself, as Christ himself, is pure. We are God's children now, today, and we will be fully grown someday, and between now and then, we are in the process of becoming more like him. We are becoming more pure. We're becoming holy because the one we're growing up to be like is pure and holy. And so what a blessing it is to be God's children. It means we receive that fundamental care and concern and compassion from God. It also means that God is fully invested in what is best for us. He is fully invested in shaping us into certain kinds of people, like all good parents are invested in that. He wants specifically to shape us into people who look like his son. But when we think about this from, from a human perspective, uh, parents and teachers and adult fig other adult figures who want to see children shaped into those into certain kinds of people, uh, they know that they, they can want that all day long for their children, but it won't happen unless the child at some level willingly takes part in that process. And that's what John is getting at here in verse 3. We are called to take part in this. We are called to purify ourselves because he himself is pure. And this is what John then goes on to talk about, beginning in verse 4. Uh, he goes on to talk about that process for a while in the next passage. Uh, he, he tells us about what it looks like to be children of God who are in the process of growing up to look like him. And he also mentions that there's the possibility that we're actually growing the other direction. Uh, there's the possibility that we are growing to look more and more like the world and the Satan who rules over 
the world. And John says in this passage that which way we grow has to do with what we practice. We are either practicing what is good and right or we're practicing sin. We're practicing what is contrary to God's ways. We're practicing what John calls here in this passage lawlessness. So read this with me. This is what John says in verses 4 through 7. He says, everyone who makes a practice of sinning also practices lawlessness. Sin is lawlessness. You know that he appeared in order to take away sins, and in him there is no sin. No one who abides in him keeps on sinning. No one who keeps on sinning has either seen him or known him. Little children, let no one deceive you. Whoever practices righteousness is righteous as he himself is righteous. So here it is. We have this, uh, this laid out for us. Whoever practices righteousness is in the process of looking more like God because God himself is righteous. And whoever practices sin, John says, hasn't seen God and doesn't know God. And then John elaborates further in verses 8 through 10. He says, whoever makes a practice of sinning is of the devil, for the devil has been sinning from the beginning. The reason the Son of God appeared was to destroy the works of the devil. No one born of God makes a practice of sinning, for God's seed abides in him, and he cannot keep on sinning because he has been born of God. By this it is evident who are the children of God and who are the children of the devil. Whoever does not practice righteousness is not of God, nor is the one who does not love his brother. So we get here in in these verses some more of that same basic truth. We can know who God's children are, and who Satan's children are, because those who are God's children practice righteousness, and those who are Satan's practice sin. Think with me for a moment about what it means to practice these things, practice righteousness or practice sin. Uh, This is really important, and it's important that we pay attention to the way John has worded this very simple contrast, uh, because when we pay attention to that, we see more clearly uh, what he means. And it's really important that we see this clearly, because if we don't, uh, we might really misunderstand him, and that could actually be really detrimental to the way we see ourselves and our relationship with God. Notice what John does and doesn't say here. John doesn't say that whoever battles and wrestles with sin is no longer a child of God. John does not say that. He doesn't say that whoever commits one sin is out and is no longer God's child and God no longer has that care and concern and compassion for them. John has actually already said uh, in 1 John 1 and verse 8, he already said that if we say as Christians that we have no sin, then we're lying. And he goes on chapter 2 and verse 1, he says, and when we do sin, we have an advocate in Christ so that our sins can be forgiven. So John knows we're going to struggle and sin. He's not contradicting what he said earlier. But here in this, practice, in this passage, he's talking about anyone who makes a practice of sinning. He's talking about someone who boldly and unapologetically keeps on sinning. And he contrasts that uh, with someone who makes a practice of imitating God. Someone who boldly and unapologetically keeps on imitating God, uh, even though they do it very imperfectly. And so this is another way of talking about what it means to walk in the light as God is in the light, or walk in darkness. In chapter 1, verse 6 and 7, John laid out that contrast there. Uh, We we can walk in the light, or we can walk in the darkness. And right here in chapter 3, this is another way of drawing out that same uh, same contrast. It is such a blessing to have people in our lives who love us, and who are wise, and who are deeply invested in us. That is a rich blessing. And when we're children, we're supposed to find that in our parents. And I hope that most of us had that. And we can also have it from other adult figures uh, in our lives. And even as adults, we still need this. And even as adults, we can still find that in our parents or in other mentor figures. Uh, those who, are, who love us and who are wise and who are so deeply invested in us, those people are gifts from God. And as gifts from God, they are also like small versions, small reflections of who God himself wants to be towards us. God wants to be uh, this way towards us. We are his children. We have been born of God. He has called us his children. And he intends for us to grow up to look like and be just like him. And he is so invested in our growth in our holiness, in our conformity to the image of his son. 
And he's so invested in those things, not because he wants to control us, not because he wants to manipulate us or just keep us from doing what we'd really rather be doing. That is not why good parents invest in their children, and it's not why God invests in us. He invests in us this way, like John says in verse 1, because of how much he loves us. And so we are left with a choice. Will we choose to trust his care and concern and compassion for us and from that place of trust do his will make it the practice of our lives or will we choose to go what we think is maybe just going our own way but John lays out for us here we don't actually go our own way we actually end up just going Satan's way who's just trying to deceive you and manipulate you and and ruin you basically ruin you for eternity which way will we choose let's choose God's will it is good it is fulfilling, it is holy, and it has the promise of eternal life with, with it. And it's an eternal life that's spent with our Creator. It's an eternal life spent with the Father who loves us so much. Let's make that choice today. Let's make that choice every day. Uh, and so this morning, if you need to come and ask for prayer to make that choice, maybe make it for the first time, you want to become a follower of Christ, uh, we extend that invitation every Lord's Day to come to Him in faith, repentance, be joined with Christ in baptism, or if you have any other need, we encourage you to come while together we stand and Taylor leads us in our song of invitation. There's a fountain free, tis for you and me. Let us haste, oh haste to its brink. Tis the fount of love from the source above, and he bids us all freely drink. Will you come to the fountain free? Will you come? Tis for you and me, thirsty soul. Prior to the Lord's Supper, we'll sing number 160, Glory to His Name, please. Glory to His Name. Down at the cross where my Savior died, down where for cleansing from sin I cried, there to my heart was the blood applied. Glory.
sin. Jesus so sweetly abides within. There at the cross where he took me in. Glory to his name. Glory to his name. Glory to his name. There to my heart was the blood applied. Glory to his name. O oh, precious fountain that saves from sin, I am so glad I have entered in. There Jesus saves me and keeps me Glory to his name, glory to his name, glory to his name. There to my heart was the blood applied, glory to Once again, we gather around here on the first day of the week to take communion. In Acts uh, chapter 2, verses 42, it says, And they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship in the breaking of the bread and in prayers. One thing that's for certain is every Sunday morning we come here and we know that we're going to take communion as part of our service. And it's... It's an important part for us to remember. Another thing to remember every first day of the week is everyone is invited to take communion. Everyone who's a Christian that believes Christ has uh, died for our sins, they have the opportunity to take communion. No one's first, no one's last. We all do that together. But there's a big responsibility with that as well. In uh, 1 Corinthians chapter... Um, chapter 1 starting in verse uh, 28 it says uh, for as often as you drink this bread and drink the, eat this bread and drink this cu cup you proclaim the Lord's death till he comes therefore whoever eats this bread or drinks this cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner will be guilty of the blood the, of the body and of the blood of the Lord but let a man examine himself and so let him eat and drink of the cup so each of us has that profound responsibility as we commune with God this morning once again we're all welcome here but we all have to understand that we need to be in the right mindset as Christians and the responsibility that comes along that with that as we take communion together let us give thanks our Heavenly Father we're so thankful that we have this opportunity this morning to commune with you we ask a blessing on this bread that represents Christ's body we understand the suffering that he did on that cruel cross and that he died for our sins, that we may have this opportunity to have eternal life with you. Be with us this morning as we take this. In his name we pray. Amen. Backing up a couple of verses, it says, uh, And in this same manner he also took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is of the new covenant in my blood. This do as often as you drink of it in remembrance of me. Let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, we ask a blessing on this fruit of the vine that once again represents Christ's shed blood. Be with 
each and every one of us this morning as we take this this morning here in your presence. In his name we pray. Amen. Each Sunday morning we also have the offering at this time. Throughout the Bible and the Old Testament, people brought their offerings to the altar. And then throughout the New Testament, and even today, now we are to give back as we are blessed as a way for us to show our love and appreciation for all that God has given us. So let's give thanks this morning. Heavenly Father, we ask a blessing on this offering. We know, dear Lord, that you have blessed each and every one of us so very much with both material and spiritual blessings. Please accept this offering this morning as a way for us to show our appreciation for all that you do for us. In his name we pray. Amen. There's a plate up here and also one in the back. Well, thank you so much for joining us to worship God this morning. I hope this was a rich blessing to you. I uh, hope and pray God was glorified in our worship today. Uh, I want to just make a few announcements before we have our closing uh, prayer, and before that we'll have one final uh, song as well that Taylor will lead us in. Uh, let me reiterate what uh, Chris mentioned at the beginning of service. If you're visiting with us, uh, we're so glad that you've decided to join us this morning. Uh, we'd like to ask if you're comfortable uh, filling out. We have a connection card that's on the back of the pew in front of you. There's also the QR code on the bulletin. You can scan that if you want to fill one out digitally, but if, you, if you'd be willing to fill that out so we could have a record of, of you being with us here today, uh, we'd really appreciate that, but we're so glad that you're here. Um, a few things coming up on the calendar. One is tonight. Uh, tonight at 6 o'clock, we're going to be serving food at the local homeless shelter here. This will be in place of our regular Sunday evening Bible study. Our Bible study is normally at 5, so I wouldn't want you to get thrown off. The, we're we're going to start serving the meal at 6. Uh, so if you could, uh, if you're planning on being there, if you could be there a little before six, so there's time to get everything set up and ready uh, for the folks who were there, we'd really appreciate that. Uh, even if you're not able to bring food, I want to just encourage you to come anyway and just be there, um, get to know these folks, uh, be a light for Christ to them. Uh, so I hope that, that you'll be able to join us uh, as we do that uh, this evening. Uh, on the 29th, next Sunday, uh, we'll have a youth day here from 12 to 2. Uh, from what I understand, there'll be, there'll be a devotional, there'll be uh, some good food, there'll be some, some fun things to do as well, some games and things. And so I uh, encourage you all to be there for that from 12 to 2, be our, our uh, youth day after, um, after service. Uh, another event coming up that I'm really excited to announce uh, is we don't actually have a specific date set for this, but last year we had a fall fellowship and we'd like to do that uh, again this year. It was a lot of fun. Uh, we had it at the Salisbury's house last year and they have uh, expressed a willingness to host us again. Uh, we don't have a specific date set out just yet. It'll be sometime uh, mid-October to end of October or maybe the first uh, of November. Uh, but I want to just go ahead and mention that so you're aware that'll be coming up. I'll let you know the date when that's settled. Uh, but we had last year, and we're going to have these things this year too, from what I understand. We had you know, good food. We had uh, fun craft and painted pumpkins and things. There was hayride and uh, just a lot of time to just... Uh, be together and just have fun, enjoying be, being with each other. And so uh, we're planning to do, that, to do that again this year, and we'll get the specific date to you soon. Uh, and then also one final announcement, uh, at least one final that I have. Uh, we are looking for additional Sunday school teachers. Our current Sunday school teachers do a great job, uh, but sometimes they would like and, and need a break. And so we want to be able to give that to them if possible. And so uh, if you're interested in teaching for a span of time, for a quarter or, or so, we can work out the length of that. Uh, but feel free to see me, see one of our elders, uh, and, and we'd love to get you plugged into that. So we are looking for that and encourage you to be thinking and praying about that if that's something that you might be interested in. Uh, those are all the announcements that I have that I've been made aware of. Are there any I've overlooked that need to be made before we dismiss today? Okay. Well, thank you all so much for joining us. Hope you all have a blessed rest of the day. We'd love to see you tonight uh, to serve at the homeless shelter if you're able to be there. If you would be standing at this time, and Taylor will lead us in our closing song, and then we'll have our closing prayer.
If the skies above you are gray, you are filled with so blue. If your cares and burdens seem great all the whole day through, there's a silver lining that shines in the heavenly land. Look by faith and see it, my friend. Trust in his promises grand. Sing and be happy. Press on to the goal. Trust him who leads you. He will keep your soul. Let all be faithful. Look to him and pray. Lift your voice and praise him in song. Sing and be happy today. Often we are troubled and tired, sick with sorrow and pain. There are others living in sin, blessed with earthly gain. Take new courage, we cannot tell what the morrow may bring. When the dark clouds vanish away, then your heart truly can sing. Sing and be happy, press on to the goal. Trust him who leads you, he will keep your soul. Let all be faithful, look to him and pray. Lift your voice and praise him in song. Sing and be happy today. Oft we fail to see the rainbow up in heaven's fair sky. When it seems the fortunes of earth frown and pass us by. There are things we know that are worth more than silver and gold. If we hope and trust him each day, we shall have pleasure untold. Sing and be happy, press on to the goal. Trust him who leads you, he will keep your soul. Let all be faithful, look to him and pray. Lift your voice and praise him in song. Sing and be happy today. We bow. Our Father, we do come before you this day singing songs of praise, Father. Searching your word for the riches that you have given to us through it. Father, the riches of being your child, your children. We're so very blessed by you day in and day out. Father, we ask as you look over us, that you continue to look and bless each and every individual here, Father. As your children, we do come before you acknowledging our sins against you. We ask for your never-ending loving kindness. Father, the mercy that you have given throughout the world. We pray that you continue to be with us as we separate. Be with us until we come back to the next appointed time. We ask this through your son's blessed and holy name, Jesus the Christ. Amen.